Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. If ever there was a time when witches might ride or confound the pure or work their fateful wickedness, this is it. The time of Halloween. The last gasp for the damned and the wicked to wreck their horrors before the midnight beyond which dawns All Hallows' Day, All Saints' Day, the celebration of all that is good. But until that lovely dawning, everything evil moves building their revels higher and higher till the powers of darkness are dispersed by the light of the world. The way you look, Margot, you've been growing young just as fast as me going the other way. You keep going that other way, Mike. Forget about me. I can't. Then you'll just have to wait. Our paths really haven't crossed yet. There's still the matter of age. I don't care how old you are makes no difference. Ah, but someday it would. Oh, you'd be surprised beyond belief how someday it would make a difference. Our mystery drama, The Unborn, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Mercedes McCambridge. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser, and CertainTeed Fiberglass Attic Insulation. I'll be back shortly with Act One. The following is a test. Please answer all questions truthfully. Question one. Which of these do you like most? Rowboat, dentist, Opali Suzu? Question two. If you and three friends wanted to take a nice trip, would you take turns carrying each other, take turns throwing each other, or buy an Opali Suzu? Question three. Given a choice, would you attend a lecture on good posture, hurt your foot, or buy an Opal Isuzu? If you answered Opal Isuzu to all three, see your Buick Opal dealer and take a test drive. Otherwise, see someone else. Oh, pull the bill, soda, shaving cream, or a prescription? It's my hemorrhoids, Mr. Edwards. Pain, itching. Well, most of my customers use this. Preparation H? Well, in many cases, Preparation H relieves occasional pain and itch for hours. Yeah, that's great. And Preparation H actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissues caused by inflammation. I'll buy that. Doctor-tested Preparation H comes in ointment or suppositories. Soothes pain and itch and actually helps shrink swelling of hemorrhoidal tissue. Now use only as directed. Is your bank open when you're busy and closed when you're not? Well, Northwest Federal Savings knows that a good place to save is ready for you when you're ready. So Northwest Federal's open 63 hours a week. If you work evenings, you can come to Northwest Federal six full days. Working days? Northwest Federal's open Monday, Thursday, and Friday evening. And if the only time you can get to Northwest Federal is 8 o'clock in the morning, well, that's okay, too. Because Northwest Federal has early bird service every morning. From 8 o'clock, you'll find five convenient Northwest Federal Savings Centers throughout Chicagoland's great Northwest Territory. So come into Northwest Federal Savings on your way to, from, or between work, shopping, or home. Anytime. Because Northwest Federal Savings keeps the best hours yours. It's Northwest Federal Savings Time, 63 hours a week. There are cities in the world, for all their good points, where the boiling pot of evil is the most libertine and unprincipled in the world. 
Many of those who vie for the title might be Macau, Casablanca, Sodom, and Gomorrah in ancient times, and in this century, Hamburg, Germany. In the early 30s, before Hitler's rise to power, it could well lay claim to being the most licentious city in Europe. It is there that our story begins. You are sad tonight, Duchess. Do you miss the Duke so much? I miss the Duke not at all. The man was an unprincipled cad. Tell me what makes you unhappy. I live only to light a smile on your lips. You live only to possess me. But you've not yet calculated the price. And now that you find me at liberty, you are busy calculating just what I might cost you. I would not haggle. I'm rich enough to give you the world. Too late, I've had the world. At least all of the civilized world. It is still yours to have again. You are a woman of incredible beauty, Margot. But beauty is finite and eventually fades. Ah. You see me by moonlight, Count Svari. You couldn't possibly. Oh, no. Not yet. Time is inexorable, Madame La Duchesa. No human agency can arrest it, except briefly. Oh, you are a devil. Why generalize it? I don't want to listen to you. You're beastly and you're cynical. And I don't need your criticism. I need... Help? Perhaps I can bring it to you. You? How can you? No one but God. Or the devil you say you are could bring me what I want. Eternal youth? I'm not that greedy. Only not to grow old until I die. Which are you the most afraid of? Death or growing old? Oh, that's easy. Death is nothing. I'm afraid to grow old. As I am at last beginning to do. Suppose I could offer you a way to avoid both. What would you offer me in return? What else can I offer you? But my immortal soul. Isn't that the classic bargain? Let me assure you that I really am the devil. And you are on the brink of sealing a bargain you cannot break. Everything you ask for. Never... To grow old. Never. You accept? Oh, yes, 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 yes. If what you promise is true. Then the deed is done. So simply. I mean, don't we cut our veins or sign in blood? That would be necessary. There are other ways we can seal our bargain more intimately. Of course. But you had better deliver... Oh, my dear Marco, you can trust me absolutely. Never to grow old, never to die. That I promise you. The first time I ran across Margo was at Mahaka. It was just before the big run for the championships at Mahaliwa. We were taking on some pretty good surf, eight to ten footers, big enough to weed out the weekenders and tough enough for any surf buff to hang ten and remember it. I had just ridden on down a real pretty. Then as I pulled out and took my lumps before planing onto the beach, there she was. Man, the end. You rode that one very well, sailor. <laughs> she broke just right for me. What's it like, slipping and sliding through that green tunnel? Oh, too much. Beyond any words I can describe. Well, that's one thrill I've never had. Yeah, I'd never figure you'd miss too many. <laughs> Could you take me with you on a joyride like that? <laughs> no way. It's uh, strictly one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, could you teach me to do it for myself? Yeah, uh, babe, that's asking for trouble. Maybe I'm looking for it. Yeah, I got a feeling I lost the ball here somewhere. Uh, I don't know just what we're talking about. 
Well, you're a very nice young animal. Don't try to push anything out of context. All I'm talking about is riding a surfboard. And I could pay you very well. The rates are ten bucks an hour when I'm working. When could I have my first lesson? On the surfboard, I mean. I was afraid that's what you meant. Well, you'd be surprised how much safer you'll be if that's all we do together. Tomorrow morning. Now, the uh, chop will be too high for beginners. Uh, make it afternoon. The two? Just the right time. And number for beginners. Oh, I was gone. Oh, sure, I knew she was out of my orbit. She had to be somewhere in her 40s, and, well, I was just out of high school. Well, give or take a couple of years. I blew the college route. Like, who needs it? Go where you want, how you want, who calls the turns. So, that was one great trip. For the couple of months it lasted. Hey! Hey! Okay? Oh, oh, oh. I think God. <laughs> you didn't break out. You bought. Oh, why? What's the difference? Hey, you didn't duck it. You tried oh. to hang in. Like you always do. <laughs> you, know, you just couldn't cut it. That's all. Oh, you translate that. Margo, <sighs> it's all instant reflex and... And... You mean that I'm too old? I didn't say that. No, that's what you meant. What you don't know is that I'll grow into it. I mean, I still want to learn to surfboard. What's the big hang-up? There are other things in this world. Well, let's make it that this is the main thing I have right now. So I'll try. Uh, well, let's face it. I, uh, I got a two-way interest. Me? Like, for instance? You. <laughs> like, for I'm right up the wall. <laughs> Well, that's too bad. I'm a little too old for you, didn't you say, Mike? Well, that was for surfing. But that's all there is with us. Are you sure? No. But we're not going to do anything about it. Well, why not? If I tried to answer that, heaven knows what trouble we'd be in. Let's just say it all could have gone our way in another world in another time. But this way, the pieces of the jigsaw puzzle just don't lock. They're out of sync, so... Uh, Quits. Better. Hey, well, wait a minute. You, you can't just walk out of my life like that. There's no way to stop me. But only because it isn't quite the time for us yet. We need a chance to grow into each other. And maybe I'll see you then. Crazy. Two long months and... All it was was Mike and Margot. I didn't even know her square name or if she was hanging as loose as she seemed. There could have been a husband around, but who wanted to dig too deep? So I... I'd never level on this around the beach. There was no make-out. That was 1968. Then things happened in bunches. Like there was this war and I got tapped. I spiked for Air Force. Oh, I learned to fly all right. I also learned to hate my own guts real good. Those two-week leaves in Japan were way out. Especially the one where I found Margot again. J.V. Bernstein had something to do with our State Department. I, I never asked what. All I knew is that every time I hit Tokyo, he lit all the fires for me to burn. All right, Mad Mike, what's it going to be this trip? I don't know. Not geisha tea and flower arrangements. I'm ready to bust out wilder than that. <laughs> when weren't you? All right, what shall we bomb ourselves with? Mike? Well, if you're not interested in drink, then what? Oh, well, that's different. Her name is Margot. How do you know that? I'm a famous seer. Prowler is a better word. Actually, I I know her. Or, or knew her. What's her name? You already remembered it. Yeah, I know that. I mean, to her other name. She is Mrs. Demetrios Constantine Stavrianos. What's she doing here in Tokyo? Sailing around the world. Just a port of call. How the other half lives. Tokyo isn't a port. The yacht, I imagine, is tied up in Yokohama at, uh, <laughs> uh, where else? The Yacht Club. She looks marvelous. I mean, 
Younger. Oh, there are ways, my friend. Little man with scalpels and silicone. I don't mean that. I know. This is a, a sort of inner thing. When I knew her, she was almost old enough to be my mother. She could adopt me right now. Knock it off. That was all of six years ago, and now it, it's, it's something I don't understand myself. What was it? it well, that I did feel for her. Oh, sure, she was something. You, you follow the big waves I did, and there are a thousand babes with all the same standard equipment. So what's the big deal? <laughs> The big deal is that this one I hadn't forgotten in six years. This one sent me all the way out of orbit. <laughs> like the old-fashioned way to say it would be, sell my soul for. Except there was a warning voice that kept saying, this one is bad news, Mike. She's real bad news. Hello, Mike. You look terrific. Mm -hmm. I can ride aboard now. Yeah? I'm getting better and better all the time. I'll uh, buy the last part. Can we go somewhere? No. Why not? I, I've grown old real fast the last few years. Old enough for me, do you think? Well, the way you look. You've been growing as young just as fast as me going the other way. Well, you keep going that other way, Mike. Forget about me. Oh, I can't. Well, then you'll just have to wait. Our paths really haven't crossed yet. There's still the matter of age. I don't care how old you are. It makes no difference. Oh, someday it would. You'd be surprised beyond belief how someday it would. Oh, excuse me. This is Mr. Stavrianos. Oh, Sophie. And this is Mike. He's a nice young boy who tried to teach me to surfboard. Mike, uh... I'm afraid I don't know your last name. Uh, Burns. I am going outside. This is no place for a woman, a non-geisha woman, shall I say. Are you coming, Demetrius? In a second, my love. All right, I'll meet you in the car. Yes. Fabulous woman, no? Why, I... No, have no embarrassment. Everyone is in love with her and wants to possess her. Like the queen or diamond, or... Helen of Troy. I would forget her if I were you. If you can. Is that a threat, sir? Oh, dear me, no. I don't have to make threats. She is something quite beyond any human being's comprehension. I should know. But for your own health, you should avoid her like the plague. Just a warning. Take it or leave it. Well, what is going on here? Did a woman named Margot make a pact with the devil? And if so, just exactly what were the terms? And if she did, what fate lies in store for a determined young man who has decided to love, not wisely and certainly too well, I shall return shortly with Act Two. Come on, we got the whole week shopping done in just 45 minutes. Yeah, and you know why? Because oh, why? during the dinner hour, everybody's home. The stores yeah, that's right. are empty. The store's empty, that's true. <gasps> Look at this. Somebody's broken in, that's what hey, it is. Look at the China closets on inside of Crime statistics show that most home break ins occur during daylight hours, that they're frequently done by kids who cause as much vandalism as theft. Now you can get instant protection with the Ultrason X. From Master Lock, the name that means security. It's an electronic burglar alarm that just plugs into any wall outlet, like a radio. Instant protection that costs less than you might think. It sends out ultrasonic waves that sense an intruder's movement and set off a loud alarm. And the Ultrason X can set off remote alarms, too, plugged in elsewhere in the house, or even next door. For the name of your nearest Master Lock alarm dealer, call this toll-free number, 800-528-6050. Right now, call 800-528-6050. 
Fire can strike anytime, anywhere, without warning. So True Value Hardware Stores suggest you safeguard your family day and night with a home sentry smoke alarm from General Electric. This is how it works and protects. Just mount the GE home sentry smoke alarm on the ceiling in the living room, kitchen, bedroom, hall, anywhere in your home. It'll detect dangerous smoke before you can see it or maybe even smell it and sounds a loud warning siren that could save your family's lives. That's especially important at night when everyone's asleep. And the dual warning system tells you when it's time to replace the battery. The battery-operated GE Home Sentry Smoke Alarm from True Value Hardware Stores works 24 hours a day to protect your family from fire. It's just one of the many values you'll find at participating True Value Hardware Stores. True Value. More than just a name. It's their way of doing business. see now, this is a story preoccupied with time, or in which time will have an important bearing on the outcome. So we left Mike and the mysterious Margot in, uh, what year? Oh yes, 1972. Still the past. Although the present and most of all the future may have a far more important bearing. But... Slowly, we have yet to leave Japan and the 72nd year of this 20th century. And it is going to take the best diplomatic effort by J.V. Bernstein to get Mike out of Japan and the local jail. I think I know. I'll have him out of here as soon as I can. Oh, hi, J.V. Am I sprung? You are sprung. But it took some plain and fancy oiling. Yeah, can you stand up? Oh. My head doesn't fall off. Huh. You're lucky you didn't get it handed to you in a basket, nearly severed by a samurai sword. Uh, what did I do? Oh, just tried to take Tokyo apart single-handed. Mm. What made you flip your lid? I couldn't get to see Margot. Margot? Mrs. Stavrianos, or whatever her name is. Oh, that one. Well, naturally. What do you mean, Naturally. Because she sailed that same night we saw her together in the geisha house. What? Huh? How do you know? Uh, look, this is no place to talk. Come on, let's get back to the embassy. You mean... You mean I'm free to go? Well, it'll cost you a couple of hundred in fines for breaking up a few straw doors and such like. No criminal charges? Mm, lucky. It's been written off to combat fatigue. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> This is the embassy? Uh, this, Mad Mike, is a park where birds do sing and bugs don't listen. Yeah. Much more happily suited for a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. Oh, come on with all this super spy crud. I, uh, I'm just looking for the woman I love. Who happens to be married to a guy who enjoys the interest of almost every major government in the world. Enjoys? Well, that's a figure of speech. Engages is perhaps a better word. Although I must say he seems to get a bang out of his notoriety. Well, what is he? Mm, financier, international broker, ship owner, puller of strings that make the universe dance to his tune. He's about as close to being the biblical conception of the devil incarnate as we have around these days. And Margot? I don't know. W what I'm asking you, is she part of it all or... Just an innocent bystander. Oh, you really have it bad. Well, how long has she been married to him? If you mean legally, I don't know. How long have they been together? Yeah. Okay, sonny boy, brace yourself for a shock. To the best of our research, about 40 years. 40 years? Oh, well, that would make her at least... There was a woman with her name, a Contessa Margot Baranya. But the records of the family were all wiped out during World War II. So this could be her daughter. Mm -hmm, could be. Even a daughter is stretching the imagination a little if it's the same woman. What are you getting at? I don't know, Mike. There's something rotten about the whole setup. The guy we know is a louse who got filthy rich on wars. 
and the weapons he brokers to keep them alive. The woman, uh, uh, the girl... You don't know anything about her. No, we don't. Well, where are they now? Rome, I think. I could check it out, but what are you planning to do? Fly there from Vietnam in a combat plane? My tour of duty's up. I'm getting out of this war. Keep track of Margot for me. By the time I was discharged, Margot had dropped out of sight. Ditto Stavrianos. Although I chased around after rumors which had them in Mozambique, the Middle East, Crete, anywhere trouble was brewing or could be stirred up. And along the way, I picked up a new kick. Racing cars. <laughs> the same reflexes that made me a surfer and a hotshot pilot worked for me behind a wheel. Within a couple of years, I was beginning to get tabbed for the top races. My first big win was most part park. And the only kind of car that could make me forget Margot. A Lola T330. And it was like crazy that, in a way, she led me back to Margot. The car. And my old buddy, J.V. He came by my trailer after the race. Hey, <laughs> J.V., what are you doing in this neck of the woods? <laughs> Just watching an old pal trying out a new way to achieve his death wish. <laughs> you like to live dangerously. <laughs> uh, why not? It's my neck. And there's nobody I owe any responsibility to. Good. All right, now I'll tell you the real reason I'm here. I want to offer you a job. <laughs> no, thanks. I don't need a job. Ah, uh, This is an offer you won't be able to refuse. Oh, yeah? <laughs> what is it? Undercover agent. You me? <laughs> You've got to be kidding. <laughs> How would you like to cross paths with Margot again? You, you found out where she is? Yes. Well, Where? We've lost touch with Stavrianos. He's disappeared, and for reasons I can't tell you, at least not yet, we've got to find him. And you think I might get to him through Margot? Yes. The last place Margot has been located, and as far as we know still is, although she disappears every now and then, is back in Rome. You've got to hand it to old J.V., he might look like a cube in his Brooks Brothers button-down shirts. But dig deep enough, and you could come up with what I always knew was there. An all right guy. Right on. So, uh, now I was a spy, or a counter-spy, or whatever I was supposed to be. Margot. Oh. oh. I didn't know you were there. I am always there. Or here. Don't you remember? You give me little chance to forget. Are you dissatisfied with our bargain? Would you rather be dead, which by this time you assuredly would have been? I might have been better off. I didn't quite understand the terms. Yeah. <laughs> No one ever really does. But everyone always accepts them, whatever they are. But you misled me. I told you I didn't mind dying. Yeah, may I remind you that you were also quite paranoid about growing old. I blame myself bitterly that I allowed myself to fall into your trap. Oh, you are lovely when you are angry. Thanks to you, Conspare, or whatever you want to call yourself... I am lovelier by each minute that passes. I am grateful for your thanks. A figure of speech. A bitter one. I wish I could find a way to defeat you. It really was for laughs. A guy ought to be ashamed to take the money. Most of the time, I sat sipping Campari at Doni's. Doni's on the uh, Via Veneto. Just sit there long enough and the whole world goes passing by. Like ten days after I got to Rome. Marco. Uh, buongiorno, bellissima. Non sono interessato. Stai segura? Molto segura. I... My, it's you. 
What are you doing in Rome? You look fabulous. Oh, thank you. So do you. So like you used to way back when we first met. It's uh, being unemployed. I haven't felt so good since I was a surf bum. Uh-huh. <laughs> a big deal. Uh, how can you... You know, you're fabulous. I mean, you look 20 years younger. <laughs> And I feel every year of it. That's a funny thing to say. I wish I could think there was anything funny about it. I'd think most women would give anything to know your secret. If they did, they'd be sorry for anything they gave. <laughs> Hold on. This uh, conversation's getting out of hand. What are we? What are you talking about? I, I, I don't dig it. No, you couldn't, but it doesn't matter. Hey, babe, you're pretty down. Um, anything I can do? Maybe. Maybe it's about time for us, Mike. You mean it? You're still interested? I never changed, but... Well, well, what about your husband? I never said he was my husband. Oh. Like that, huh? No, not like that. But you're... I mean, you're still uh, together. Do you see him anywhere? Well, no, but... uh... You always know where he can be found? Oh, yes. I always know where he can be found. But he doesn't own me. Yet. I'm lost again. Not yet, Michael, darling. Not yet. But you soon will be. If you still want me. I've wanted you since the first moment you walked into my life six years ago. Twelve. No. Only six. Time goes twice as fast for us, Mike. Now come away. Let's forget everything. Except each other. I looked at this golden woman. No, girl. This golden girl. Glowing as if she were molded out of burnished bronze. Except... Margot could never have come from any mold. She was too original. I could feel the warmth of her. Her breath caressing my cheek as she leaned close to whisper. Well, then why that strange, cold feeling in the pit of my stomach? What was I scared of? What was I getting into? And if I did want to hit the panic button... Was there any way out? You should have looked more carefully, Mike. What happened to the few wrinkles by the eyes that used to mar her beauty ever so slightly? The slight sag of flesh beneath the chin and along the jawline. And how could this mysterious woman, once old enough to be your mother, now growing older, have the skin and muscle tone of a woman your own age, and younger. I shall return shortly with Act Three. Ever since Budweiser was first brewed back in 1876, the Budweiser people have talked with pride about the careful way they brew the king of beers and that great Budweiser taste. Here's how we were saying it ten years ago. Snap the crowd off a bottle of Bud and let the flavor rock. Here's a beer that makes it mighty clear what taste is. No matter how you say it or sing it, it all adds up to a taste, smoothness, and drinkability that's made Budweiser the king of beers for a hundred years. Anheuser-Busch, headquarters, St. Louis, Missouri. Bell does it again. Bell Auto Imports cuts hundreds of car prices on four giant floors at 25th and Michigan. Save as never before on brand new Fiats. Choose from Fiat X19s, 124 Spiders, 131s, and 128s. Only $28.95 full price delivers a brand new 1976 Fiat 128. Hundreds and hundreds less than before. Yes, only $28.95 for a brand new Fiat. But only at Bell Auto Imports. It's the buy of the year. 
what Bell delivers Bell Services with the top-notch parts and service department that has served Chicagoans for 55 years. So get your new Fiat where the price is right and the follow-through service can't be beat. Bell Auto Imports is your convenient near downtown dealer just off the Stevenson Expressway at 2500 South Michigan Avenue. Open daily till 8, Saturday till 5, closed on Sunday. This is WBBM Chicago News Radio 78. Packing in his hotel room in Rome, Mike Burns was in that super high state of euphoria that a man reaches only when at last a long sought for conquest is within his grasp. Well, let's be fair to Mike. He was a man in love and young enough to be in love with love. Young enough to forget everything else in life. Till a phone call brought him out of the rose-colored clouds and back to reality. Yeah? Mike? Sure, who's this? A friend. Long time no here. Uh, Now look, just listen and answer short and sweet. You're hooked up with M again. You asking or telling? We know you have been and that you're going away. What business is that of yours? That's a silly question. It's your business, too, if a third party turns up. Where is Stavrianos? Look, buddy, I, I, I guess it's something I'd like to know myself anyway. I'll, I'll try to find out. Where do I reach you? Forget it. I know where to reach you. Not good enough. The stops are all out for reasons you're not aware of, and the world could be sitting on a powder keg. Where? All right. Anna Capri. About the nearest thing to heaven. Let's keep our fingers crossed that you locate Stavrianos before there's hell to pay. <laughs> I picked up Margot at the Spanish Steps, and together we drove south to Naples. We dumped the rented car there and went by boat to Capri. From the dock, we snaked back and forth around impossible turns by bus to an eagle's nest high above the Adriatic. Wherever you looked from there, everything was blue and flooded by sunlight. I guess if I have a picture of heaven, it looks like Capri. And we were madly in love. And Margot was astonishingly a girl again. Younger and more alive than me. Shining with youth. Uh, what are you doing up this early? I couldn't sleep. <laughs> was I snoring again? Oh, do you ever. <laughs> My darling, I love you whether you're awake or asleep. There's no problem there. Where is the problem? <laughs> Did I say there was one? What shall we do today? Uh, eat, sun ourselves, and go back to bed again. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't even get up. <laughs> you suppose I'm dead? I know very well that you are not. <laughs> if I was, this is the only way I'd like it to be. Oh. Now, who the devil is that? Anyone but who you mentioned, I hope. Who was it? It was uh, for me. Uh, I have to go down to the village and make a long-distance call. Is it so important? Yeah, I, I guess. It, uh, it has to do with us. Us? How? D- darling, forget that for a moment. I, I-, I want to ask. I, I mean, I'm-, I'm sorry, but I have to. What's the deal with you and Stavrianos? Well, what do you mean? Deal? Uh, are you married? No. Where is he? Do you know? Oh, yes. Where? Uh, oh, okay. You, you don't have to tell me. Just... Well, after this, will you and he still be together? We never have been. Not the way you mean. He's out of your life? I didn't say that. I wish I could. I wish you could, too. Why not? Mike. Mike, I love you, but I don't answer questions. You've got to take me on faith, or not at all. I'll take you on faith. But I also have to go make the phone call. All 
the way down the hill, I was busy making my decision. If it was J.V. on the phone, he could go climb a tree. Right at this moment, I couldn't care about international spy games. I was with the woman I loved, and nothing was going to interfere with that. I thought. I quit! You can't. Now, Mike, listen to me. All our information tells us that Stavrianos already has in his possession a small nuclear device. Well, how do you know he has it? Well, let's define terms. We don't know that he actually has it. He is, one might say, the broker between the country that developed it and the potential buyer. Well, who's the buyer? We don't even know that much. Just think of it this way. Can you imagine such a weapon in the hands of any terrorist organization? The threat they could pose if their demands are not satisfied? The holocaust they could bring down on the whole world? Okay, okay. But what can I do about it? Find Stavrianos. We can't. I don't know if Margo will tell me where he is. Well, if she doesn't, heaven help us all. And if she does, heaven help me. What's wrong, darling? I don't know that anything is yet. Just a hunch everything could be. The telephone call? Yes. Bad news? Yes. Is there any way I can help? Yes. Then ask me. Where is Stavrianos? Darling, I told you. He doesn't mean anything between us. I got news for you. He does. Why? All right. I, I, I won't hack around. The only way I could find my way back to you was as a government snoop. M my job is to find Stavrianos through you. Mike! Is that your only interest in me? Oh, you know it isn't. How well I know. And how sorry I am that I ever allowed you to meet me. Why? Because we have no future, Mike. Especially now. I won't accept that. You'll have to accept it. We've had this short time together, and it was right, and it was wonderful. But it couldn't last. No, 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 don't. Don't don't interrupt me. Listen to me. Remember back when you first met me. I was old enough then to be your mother. I was 41 to your 18. What? But already, I was coming back to you. Coming back to me? Listen to me. When I first met Stavrianos... I was headed for my 60s, and I had an absolute terror of growing old. And he turned the clock upside down for me. I don't understand. How could anyone understand who hasn't made a pact with the devil? The devil? Haven't you learned enough about Stavrianos to know that's what he is? But what kind of pact? One that really ended our love affair before it could have begun. No. Oh, yes, my love. Believe me, these past few weeks have been my only taste of heaven. But now I have to go. And I hope I can take him back to hell with me. Margot, don't go to him. I'd give my own life to save yours. You know I that. I know that, and I also know how foolish that would be. Why? Because you don't understand. You don't understand the pact I made. I have no fear of death, since I will never die. He promised you that. He tricked me. But his promise was a true one. That I should never grow old and that I should never die because he reversed the life process for me. And from the moment I sold my soul to him, I have been growing younger day by day, week by week, and year by year. And so, Mike, as we grow apart, you uh, and I... At twice the pace. Since you grow older and I grow younger, don't you see? There is no hope for us. No. There is no hope. There is no hope for us, no hope for me. So this is goodbye, my love. Look, I, I know you must think I'm crazy, J.V., but that's how it was. We, we argued all through the day and... 
back and forth till exhaustion. And finally, I, I, fe I fell asleep. And when I woke, she was gone. You've got to help me find her. I can't, old buddy. No, no, no. You got me into this. Now, if it hadn't been for you, you've got to. Now, where is she? I can only tell you one thing. By our standards, Stavrianos and she are dead. What do you mean by our standards? You haven't been reading the news lately, not even the headlines. So what? A small island in the Aegean Sea just up and disappeared yesterday. I don't read you. You will. Oh, it's written off to a sudden earthquake or other natural causes, but... It seems to have been the private property of one Demetrios Stavrianos. How do you know that? Because a woman named Margot left Capri suddenly and flew directly there. You mean... Mar Margot is... is dead? I'll tell you something, buddy boy, from my heart. I hope Stavrianos, whoever he was... And your girlfriend, Margot, whoever she might have been, are dead forever and buried six feet deep. <laughs> the rest of the world is better off if they are, as even you, old buddy, will find out in time. It took a little time, but I guess the human spirit is elastic. I came back. Well, I still get the shakes and I wonder about things. She haunts me. Margot and her husband, or whatever he was, Stavrianos, were burned to a crisp in a terrible explosion that wiped out a whole island as well. And yet, more and more as I grow older, I'm afraid to look at children. I, I watch them playing in a park, on a beach, at amusement parks, and so often I see a girl who might be Margot. It, it used to be teenagers, but now as the years pass, it's the little tots, younger and younger. Is it faintly possible that Faust is more than a legend? That one can make a pact with the devil? and that he could switch the whole deal, instead of holding off age, could reverse the whole process of growing old so that, in the end, a person would be nothing. Unborn, a thing that never was. Interesting question. What do you think? And whether you agree with it as a possibility or not, aren't you terrorized by the very concept? To live life in reverse, to travel backwards to an innocent infant, even to the conception itself. Certainly if the devil wanted to steal the purest soul, where else could he find one more pure? I shall return shortly. If your attic has less than six inches of insulation on the floor, you're being robbed every day without ever knowing it. To stop the under-insulation robber and possibly save up to 30% on the cost of fuel to heat and cool your home, inspect your attic. Then see your neighborhood CertainTeed building materials dealer or insulation contractor. CertainTeed fiberglass attic insulation will stop that robber once and for all. How does your laxative work? Many brand name laxatives contain ingredients that expand in your stomach. That's how they work. We know a medicine that works differently. It's in the X-Lax pill. Overnight, the X-Lax pill gently stimulates your system's own regular rhythm. Stimulates your system for relief in the morning. No surprises, just relief in the morning. That's the X-Lax pill. Try it tonight with confidence. For occasional use only as directed, X-Lax pills. Settle down. 
I have bronchial asthma, but I also have a class to teach. So I take Bronchade tablets. They help keep my occasional asthma attacks away for hours. Primatine tablets, they worked, but Bronchade has an extra ingredient to help get rid of congestion. And with asthma, getting rid of bronchial congestion is really important. Bronchade helps me breathe easy for hours. Bronchade tablets do more to let you breathe easier. Use only as directed. Do you have a taste for things that are a little out of the ordinary? Look, Doris, it has a clock in its stomach and it glows in the dark. I think we should snap it up, Dick. Do you like things that are fun but are also functional? Look, Dick, this is fun. Uh-huh, but is it functional, Doris? Do you want to be the talk of the town? Oh, Dick and Doris, we were just talking about you. Then the Opal Isuzu is your kind of car. It's not ordinary, it's fun but functional, and people will talk about it. Did you hear what Dick and Doris bought? The Opal Isuzu, a dandy new small car at your Buick Opal dealers. By some miracle of fortune, upward air currents after the explosion carried the deadly byproducts over the Sahara Desert where they were dispersed and absorbed. Margot and Stavrianos have never been seen again. Is it too much to speculate that she had her revenge and that the devil is locked up in hell for good where he belongs. Why not hope? Someday we must all believe that the world will wake up and banish him as we come to our senses. We must believe or else go mad. Our cast included Mercedes McCambridge, Robert Dryden, and Bob Caliban. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.